Welcome. It is 1 p.m. Welcome to the session. Today we are going to talk about brain health. But let me ask you a few questions first. Do you need, uh, do you read sometime a, a passage in a book and then you need, you have not been thinking about it and you need to read it again? Do you sometime maybe bump into people in the street? Uh, do you find that you maybe forgot to know if you lock your door before you leave your home? Uh, do you lose your temper and then you regret it? Uh, do you have important email or letters that you need to address and then you don't for days? Or do you fail to listen people's name when you meet them? All this question, simple question, come from a cognitive assessment test. Now, whatever your age or your level of fitness, we often train the body for muscle gain or weight loss, but we forget about the brain. We don't understand the necessity of paying attention to it. Now, this session was designed with the great knowledge of Ryan Glatt that has created a certification, a brain health certification that is available on the Functional Aging Institute education site. So, of course, like any topic exercising in the brain, more research are still needed to be able to validate the finding that we have uh, found uh, between the interaction of cognition and exercise. So, you know your body. If you have any pre-existing condition, before we do the exercise, make sure that you are clear by your healthcare provider or modify it accordingly because you know your body. So today, the subject is so vast, I'm just going to attempt to make you understand, right, uh, the, the, the different tweak that you can bring to your exercise, right? So for example, we need to understand the brain has different region and those region are stimulated by different type of action. Like coordination is stimulating the cerebellum, which is more in the back of your brain, while the cardiovascular exercise, on another hand, are more, you know, uh, interacting with the temporal lobes. So, now the goal here is going to be to take the exercise we usually do and to tweak them to bring those little elements of brain fitness. Are you ready? All right. We're going to start with stretches. And I want you right now to visualize your body being now the center of a giant clock. So you're going to have to organize in your thought and, and, and visualize that clock that doesn't exist right here on the floor. Now you follow me? Perfect. We're going to start with an hamstring stretch. And for this, by the way, we're going to do all the exercise on the floor and then we're going to challenge them on the power plate. Forgot to mention that. So we're going to start here with our body in the center of this clock and then we're going to bring that right leg to 12 p.m. Now with my opposite arm, I'm going to go and challenge to go to 3 p.m. 2 p.m., 1 p.m., and 12. Let's switch. My left leg now is towards 12 p.m., and I'm going <laughs> on the opposite, right? And I'm going to now go to 9 and 10 and 11. I want you to visualize that as we are doing those stretch. Now, watch out. We're going for a hip stretch. So we're going to bring that right leg now to 6 p.m. And with my arm, my clock has suddenly come in front of me. And I'm going to challenge going now to 3 p.m. And then 2 p.m., 1 p.m., and then staying here to 12. Are you seeing that doing those exercises, and if you're a health professional, cueing your client to those different movements or making it a little bit more gameplay, but also force them to visualize now going to 9 and then 10 and then 11 and again, I'm back to 12. All right, you're getting the concept here, right? Now, another part that make it now for the resistance and the training itself 
we're going to start with a few exercises where we can add a dual skill, like a dual tasking, which is so important to keep you performing while you're being distracted. So let's see. We're going to be doing a squat, but I have now my tennis ball, and as I squat, I'm going to throw the ball in the air and make sure that I catch it. Let me attempt it. So I squat, and as I'm going up, I'm going to have my ball here and challenge to throw the ball in front of me and catch it. Now, this is very reactive, and you can plan on now progressing to throwing faster or, at the opposite, bouncing the ball now. Oops, you could change also the tempo. So you could decide to stay into the squat and continue to throw the ball in a rebound, forcing the client to load, load, load in that position. It's really making it more fun and interactive. Now, let's do another simple exercise. Let's do a balance exercise now. So important for anybody, right? We're going to go into a single leg balance, and this time, I'm going to throw the ball against the, the wall. If you were working with a trainer, you would throw the ball each other. So let me show you. Now, it's making it much more challenging because as I am trying to stabilize and find my equilibrium in that single leg, my brain is busy doing another task. Now, remember, all what I'm showing you will go on the vibration. Now, let's go for a plank exercise, for example. Now, a different task is going to be, as I plank, to remember all the first name of my family member. So are we ready? So I'm going to be into my plank, and I'm going to hold this plank and call for the name of my family. Christian, Aimé, Chantal, Henri, Maurice. Did I mention I'm French? So, but you get the idea here where it is to stimulate now your memory versus a skill. And then the last one will be, as I am doing a lunge back, I'm going to stay here and bounce my ball three times each side. One more time. Good. So, are we ready to attempt on the vibration? I'm using now the vibration to modify the environment of the exercise. As you can see here, that vibration is going to suddenly stimulate more blood flow, disrupt my balance, and it's going to suddenly create an additional challenge for my client to do the exercise properly. So let's try. So I'm now into my squat, remember? And I was throwing the ball. <laughs> and I am nervous just trying to do it in front of you. Now, if you notice, I may be much slower, and that is because it's requiring me more tension. Now, let's try to do the single leg balance with throwing against the wall. Oh, I am actually failing in doing the exercise because it's the demand on my brain is so important, and I have a hard time doing the motor skill and then doing the exercise. Now let's try to do my plank. So I am right here. And I'm going to try to remember <laughs> the name of my family member. All right, Christiane, Aimé, uh, Chantal, Henri, uh, Angèle. <laughs> As you notice, Again, I am slower 
in remembering the name of my family member because now my core and my body is exposed to a different stimuli that is the vibration. The last exercise is going to be to do my lunge back. Are we ready? I'm going to catch my ball. <laughs> that has roll up. Good. And I'm going to now try to do this exercise. So we're standing on the power plate. And I have a hard time, again, finding my balance. Good. All right. So in conclusion, I show you today some type of exercise that we do it currently. A squat, a plank, a single leg balance, all those exercises that you're doing usually. But we have added an element, either touching an object and forcing you to do a dual skill or remembering things that are visual or in our memory, like the name of the family members or that clock that I have suddenly to imagine. Tomorrow, we'll do an entire session considering this, but I want you at home to participate. I will call the cue and make sure to see that you are capable of following that cue. Now that you know what it's gonna be about, I'm gonna challenge you at home with different cueing. I hope I see you tomorrow. It is at 6 p.m. Easter time, right here on the Facebook page of PowerPlate USA.